later on. I'm now going to turn to John Edmonds, a member of the SAGE Group, a distinguished professor of epidemiology. John, very good to see you um, again. Um, you and your colleagues fear there is a risk of a third wave of COVID. Talk, talk me through your reasoning. Yeah, I think, um, I think there is a significant risk of a, a wave occurring in the summer. I don't know whether we're on the third or fourth now, but, you know, a summer wave. I mean, essentially what we're doing is we're lifting the brakes um, a little bit earlier than, you know, you, if you kept the brakes right on until we're all vaccinated, that's the safest way to do it. Uh, and, and I mean, all of us. Um, and Including children. children? Yeah, I, uh, including children, yeah. I, I think we do need to vaccinate the vast majority of us in order to be able to keep the lid on this epidemic more or less permanently. Um, so we all need to be immune effectively. Um, uh, and, uh, but that's gonna take a long time. You know, I've discussed that before with you. It, mm. it will take a long time to vaccinate all of us with two doses. And so the approach that's being taken is um, to ease up the restrictions gradually, um, but knowing that, uh, that the, or ensuring that the elderly and the highest risk individuals have been vaccinated Many of them will have had two doses by the time we really start to ease restrictions. But that will still leave the other half of the population, roughly, or that haven't been vaccinated. And if we ease restrictions, then cases will occur. Um, and they, they will occur. It, it's sort of inevitable, really. They will occur in the younger half of the population. And they will, um, that will expose the older half, the vaccinated half of the population, to to the virus. And so we will, well, I think we will test to see just how good the vaccines really are. And so on that, we are on a route map. Uh, the, the Prime Minister and his uh, colleagues say that we're hitting all the various data targets that he wants. So we appear to be on a route map to essentially getting out of lockdown by the 21st of June. What kind of restrictions would you want to continue to be still in place to limit the deleterious effect of this new wave that you think is almost inevitable? Well, I think, uh, you know, maybe there isn't extra restrictions that have to be in place, but, but I mean, the Prime Minister said himself, I mean, uh, you know, we could delay some of the steps and, and maybe um, that might be necessary. Who knows? I mean, you know, there's huge uncertainty. I mean, I know, yeah. uh, you know, scientists always say that there's a lot of uncertainty uh, and so on, but it really, the, the, the projections going forward, it, it's very, very difficult to make any, uh, to, to be certain about what might happen. I think so, many of us think there will be a third wave, uh, or fourth, whatever it is, um, uh, but how big that will be, how important that will be in terms of uh, hospitalizations and deaths, things we really care about, mm. uh, we don't know. I mean, we, we really have huge uncertainty about that. So I think, we have to monitor things very, very carefully, not just here, but also abroad, because we have to look at other countries. Uh, I mean, Anushka just showed some nice analysis oh. looking at other countries, uh, but also looking at, you know, gleaning what we can about vaccine efficacy, both here, but also where the, the vaccines that we're using here have, have been used abroad. That sort of thing um, will help to reduce our uncertainty. But some of the key uncertainty will remain. We cannot predict how people will behave, how people will react following these different easing of restrictions. And we can monitor it after it's happened, but it's very difficult to predict. And, um, you know, it, 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 the, the quicker people go back to normal, um, normal behavior, the sort of, you know, as we were in February of last year, for instance, uh, the more, uh, the virus is likely to come back, um, you know, the quicker it's likely to come back. So, you know, there's certain things that we really can't know and we just have to monitor it very, very carefully. And that's part of the reason why there are these gaps in the easing, you know, so that we can try and monitor how things are going. But that's always looking back a bit how the last easing went. Uh, it, it's, there's still huge uncertainty about how the next one will impact on people's behaviour. I get I suppose what I was sort of driving at is some of your colleagues think that for months we probably will or should wear masks, keep one and a half to two metres away from people, 
uh, the, the, uh, quite a lot of your colleagues like these um, so-called COVID certificates, which would show whether, you know, we're immune, we've had a test or uh, we've had a vaccine. Um, w w what do you think? Do you, do, in, are you in favour of those sorts of measures, you know, more or less as far as the eye can see after June the 21st? I think many of them will happen anyway. I think people will continue to wear masks, whether they're mandated or not, um, I, you know, and hand washing. And of course, uh, test and trace will still be in place, which does take uh, some of the strain off, uh, off uh, you know, off the epidemic and to some extent, some of the impact of the epidemic is mitigated by test and trace. That will stay in place. So some of these things will stay in place. Uh, the effect of other things like the sort of certification you know, I, I, I think that, that that could help take the strain. Um, obviously, it's a political decision, and I understand uh, the, you know, there's huge um, sensitivities about that. Uh, but it could help in, in getting parts of the economy open up, up again that may otherwise, might, you know, otherwise have to wait some. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, the arts and sporting events and so on. Um, you know, taking a test before entering uh, those, I think is going to happen, whether it has a certificate or not. But, but I think that I, I think I suspect that that's going to happen um, over the next few months for sure. I, 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 I think those will stay in place. And, and if you had to sort of calculate a probability, um, yes, you think there's another wave coming within the next year or so. Is there a significant risk of another lockdown? I think we can manage it without. Um, mm. I, you're talking about a national lockdown, of yeah. course. Um, I think we can manage it without. I think um, at some point the vaccine really will take the strain, um, and uh, you know that that's that's a, still a few months off, but but it will take the strain. It mm. will take the, the. So I think the prime minister is exactly right what he said yesterday that 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 the the, the, the main effect at the moment has been the lockdown. Uh, but the but the the vaccine program has helped. Moving forward, of course, the 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 the, the role of the vaccine program will become greater and greater and greater until, as I say, we're all vaccinated and and then it will be taking the vast majority of the strain. And I think we can be very we safe to re, to to you know. Uh, release all the other measures. I, I can I just ask very briefly, because we're, we're, we're almost out of time. I mean, one of the great risks that many of your colleagues constantly talk about is of the, vac the virus changing so much that vaccines are not effective. Do, we, do you think we now know enough about the kind of mutations to be confident that actually we are not going to find ourselves in a position where for months we will not be protected by a vaccine? I think that we can we can get a fairly good idea about which type of uh, variants are likely to be of most concern and might, uh, you know, likely to put most pressure on, on a vaccination program. And, and of the ones that are known at the moment, the South African uh, variant is probably the most worrying. And so I think it's right that we do everything we can to try and keep that, the cases of that down. And so I think what we're seeing, uh, the sort of action we're seeing in South London and elsewhere, trying to keep uh, cases of the South African variant down. I think we will see uh, going forward. I think we'll see more of these. I, I think that what we are looking at in South London is a, you know, is a sort of a example of what we'll see now in the coming months as we try our best to keep that variant as oh. uh, out or uh, at, at, at as low a level as we possibly can. Because if these mass testing uh, um, events don't work that well, and we don't know yet, I mean, we'll have to oh. evaluate this one very carefully, then it po it's possible that we will have to impose, you know, some sort of local restrictions back in place. Like, nobody wants to do it. So that's why it's really important that these, that we, that we test this uh, testing system as, as, as yep. you know, mass testing as, as, as robustly as we can. And, and hopefully that is going to be sufficient to be able to keep cases low because it's it's super important that we do to buy us enough time to potentially get new vaccines Jeez. that will be able to protect against those uh those variants john great to see you as always uh come back soon um,